Mr Howard, thank you so much for your time. First of all, how would you sum up the year of 2001 in just a few words? Momentous, the most um, epoch-changing year, overwhelmingly because of the terrorist attacks and what that meant for the world. In terms of what that meant for the world, you sent Australia to war with Afghanistan. We lost lives, uh, Australian lives in Afghanistan. Was it worth it? Oh, I think that intervention in Afghanistan tragically did involve the loss of 41 Australian lives, but it was justified. And there's no doubt that the world would be more at risk if the capacity of Al Qaeda to mount further attacks had not been destroyed by that intervention in Afghanistan. Is there anything you would have done differently with that intervention? Not in substance, perhaps, detail at the margin, but we're not given the benefit of hindsight to really even think about that. The Cabinet documents um, state that there was no plan to be there medium to long term. We were there eventually for 20 years. At the time, what year did you think we'd be leaving Afghanistan? I thought we'd be in and out as part of an operation to deny Al-Qaeda the capacity to repeat 9-11. And, and that succeeded. But as always, once you become involved in a military operation, circumstances change and the concern that Al-Qaeda might come back and the Taliban would be resurgent uh, is the reason why we stayed longer. Was 20 years too long or should we oh, still be there? I, I, I mean, it, it's in, in a sense, you can't measure something by the number of years you measure it by what was achieved. And, and the primary purpose of the intervention was achieved. Day five of the Tampa crisis has seen no softening of John Howard's resolve. We will not allow these people to land in Australia. If we look at the boat policies more generally, um, Nauru, that centre was set up in 2001. The discussion around Christmas Island started at that stage. Were you expecting those to still be going 20 years on? Look, I reacted to the challenge we had at the time and I don't know that I sat down and did some precise calculation as to the number of years. I knew that we had to devise a policy that deterred people from attempting perilous journeys that cost lives and that policy succeeded. And the demonstration that that policy succeeded was the loss of life and the tragedy that followed the decision of the Rudd government to reverse my policy. Nauru is still operational at the moment, should it be? Um, that is really a matter for the current government. Another significant moment in 2001 was the children overboard. Mm. Um, you said, I don't want in Australia people who would throw their own children into the sea. Now, you knew not so long after that wasn't the case. Do you regret saying that at the time? No, Should you I have said, I'm wrong, I'm sorry? No, because the, the information I had at the time, I made that statement, supported that belief. And, and later, uh, and after a, you know, a, a lot of investigation, uh, a different view was established. Well, I accepted that and uh, uh, in no way were people who put that uh, different view in any way uh, affected or penalised. The election in general, we've spoken about the Tampa crisis and September 11 being big parts of the election campaign in the end. How pivotal were they, do you believe, for you to be able to win that campaign of 2001? I think we would have won that election uh, absent 9-11 and, and Tampa although I accept that the government won support from the public because of our reaction from those two events. Today you've spoken and you've reflected on your time in China, the fact mm. that you visited there in 2001. Was there any hope uh, in your mind or within some of your colleagues that it could have become a democracy? Was that the way that China could have gone? Oh, I still hold the view that years and years into the future, there's going to be a big uh, debate, denouement is the French word, <laughs> big debate about the future uh, of the country. And more and more uh, Chinese people are in the educated middle class and more and more of them are going to demand a say in their own future. But that is a long way distant. And right at the moment, uh, you have an iron grip at the top, uh, which is causing difficulties, particularly 
with the United States, but also with Australia. And we have to understand that it's a challenge, but we have to work hard at preserving what is a very important market for Australia. We should never forget that. And so is there anything the Australian government could do now to try and repair that relationship? Well, the Australian government is not responsible for the relationship having deteriorated. The deterioration has been through a different attitude at the top in China. I think we should be ready to respond to any opportunities. I don't see a lot right at the moment, but the plan What would those opportunities well, be? Well, you, you, you never know. The important thing is accepting that you're never going to know when the opportunity arises. The important thing is to be flexible enough to respond when it does appear on the horizon. Mr Howard, thank you so much for your time. Pleasure.